Okay, let us talk about um, how we're gonna do this. So, so super cool. Uh, we are going to uh, go uh, do our last data collection effort starting uh, today. You guys can start today, if not <clears throat> sometime this week. Um, so want to go over this, make sure it makes sense to everybody in terms of what we're doing. So the first step is we're going to sign up for our targets. So we'll do that once I finish the intro, but I first wanted to go over um, the basic idea. So there's a, this is in our module and you guys can, so this is this module for uh, this week. And we're going to sign up for some uh, place of the survey. Um, the first thing, because this was an issue last year with COVID, first step is going to be to check and um, just Googling right now to make sure those businesses are still open. Um, one of the ongoing issues with this data collection effort is just that by the nature of seafood businesses, they, you know, restaurants go out of business and all this and that, but obviously particularly challenging during the pandemic times when so many restaurants um, went under, unfortunately. So um, it's just too hard for me to constantly be checking up. So the, you guys are going to sign up for places. And the first thing is going to be, let's just check and make sure that they seem to still be, still be alive and they're still, still functioning. And if not, we can just find an alternative one uh, for you guys to do. Um, but then we're going to do data collection and we'll talk about how we do that, et cetera. And so the links for all these things you'll need is in the bottom of that page here. It says data resources. And so first, I just wanna talk about our basic uh, data collection effort. So this is a, a Excel sheet. Um, this works best if you take this as an Excel sheet and print it up via Excel. The, the formatting changes when you put it into Google Sheets. You can of course put it into Google Sheets. If you wanted to do it on your tablet, you could do that. But, but just so you guys know, it's, it's formatted for Excel. Okay. Um, Again, what's the purpose of this activity? The purpose of the activity is to look at point of sale seafood items. So you walk off the street and you go try to buy a fish taco, you go try to buy a can of tuna and what information is available to us, okay? So the basic thing we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be doing everywhere. There's subtle differences based on if we're in a market or in a restaurant, um, which we'll talk about, but but the basic idea is we do the same thing in, in all these businesses. So what you'll notice here, um, we've sometimes done this in Spanish. Uh, and so I have, I have data sheets in Spanish too. If you guys wanted to do that, you're welcome to do it in Spanish if you want to. Um, but uh, this year, because of all the craziness with COVID and stuff, we're not, that's not a, a official part of this. So if you guys are curious and want to, by all means, you're more than welcome. But um, we can just do everything in English is also fine. Um, okay, so what I have here on the on the, the bottom down here, so everybody just look up here, don't don't download it yet, just let's just pay attention that we're all making sense. What I have is I have um, a data sheet that you can print up and take with you out to the market or the um, restaurant. And then I have an example one, so for the markets, and then I have another one that you can print up for the restaurant and an example one. So let's just first look and see what, what is on our supermarket data sheet. So this is gonna say, uh, you know, and, and you're gonna type, you're gonna enter all this data electronically. So with our opinion polls, you, know, you did the surveys and then you guys submitted the physical copies. You don't need to submit anything physically here. You do need to type it in and enter it, but you know, you might want to save these sheets for your records and make sure we see if we have any questions, but you're not going to have to, to turn in these, um, these, these logs right there. So it's your name, day of the week, uh, the date you did the survey, the time you did the survey, what, 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 the, what the place was that we're doing the survey. Okay, and then we have, for each business, we have two different data sheets you're going to enter the data onto. We have one that we call the qualitative, it's not exactly the qualitative data sheet and the quantitative data sheet. The quantitative data sheet is all the stuff about the individual seafood items. 
the qualitative data sheet is some introductory comments just about the business. Okay, everybody with me? So the first bit of this, all this stuff right up here, this is all the qualitative, goes in the qualitative data sheet. And then as we scroll down to the bottom, this is the, these are the quantity. So this is the quantitative stuff. So this would be item one that you saw on the shelf, item two you saw on the shelf, three on the shelf, et cetera. So let's look at those qualitative questions. Oh, I should also say there could be hundreds of items on the quantitative side of things, right? It's every different thing being sold, right? So this thing, this, there's this thing in the frozen, um, in the freezer, in this package. And there's this thing, and there's Van de Kamp's fish sticks, and there's blah, blah, blah's frozen calamari, and da, 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 right? So each of those things is one line. So you don't know until you go in as to how many, um, how many items there will be. For the qualitative stuff, it's always the same number for each, uh, each place. So what are, what are those questions? So the first thing is gonna be, okay, uh, language used, you guys are mostly probably say English, right? First one is, are there any Prop 65 warnings? Somebody tell me, anybody remember what Prop 65 is? Everybody recall what that is? Here. California law is stating that there's things that are carcinogenic. Right. And the, and, and the biggest thing related to seafood, any guesses as to what this would be? Mercury, Mercury right, right. And so, um, so this is the sign that says, you know, oh, I pump gas and, you know, gasoline has all these, um, you know, cyclic aromatics that are toxic and all that kind of stuff. So, okay, so the question is, are there any Prop 65 warning signs posted? Right. When I walk into the, the area of the seafood in the market, when I walk into the, the restaurant, do I see any of those? And it's just yes or no. Boom, done. In the context of um, the markets, the most important areas are our cleanest data are going to come from the, the, the seafood counter area and the seafood freezer area. So this just says this is just to give us a relative idea about this place relative to others is 100 and this is the percent of the meat counter. This is, we're not looking, I'm not looking for you guys to measure down to the 10th of a percent, right? This is like, is it half? Is it a third, 25%, right? Again, just take a glance. It's a big giant selling a bunch of meat and, the, and there's a little teeny edge that, that's, that's selling seafood. Okay, so it's 10%. Or is it 100% or is it 50%, right? That'll give us some sense as to how, how seriously this, um, this seller treats seafood. Um, yeah, okay, okay, now, okay, then we have to ask people a few questions, right? So if it's in the market, it's gonna be the fishmonger, the person at the seafood counter place. If there's no seafood counter place, then you gotta ask one of the store clerks, right? But the, if it's in the restaurant, it would be the waiter or waitress we'd ask. Okay, and so the questions are here. So, um, and again, we're not trying to blame anybody. We're not, we're not saying you're stupid or anything. We just want to know, right? So the first question is, are you familiar with MSC? Remember Marine Stewardship Council, that's that third party certification. Are you familiar with MSC, Seafood Watch, uh, or, you know, uh, Sustainable seafood, anything like that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I guess. Sure, whatever, right? Yes. Um, and then how many of your customers ask about sustainable seafood? Again, we're trying to compare different institutions here. So people say, oh, You're like, mm. on a given day, like how many people do you serve on your shift? Uh, I serve uh, 100 people. Okay, so on a given day, is it like one of those people asked about this? None, 20, 30, right? So as much as possible, we want, we'd like to get a percentage out of that. They might just say a little or a lot or most people or something. So if that's all they say, you can just write that down. But, but if you can, try to push them to say, you know, can you give me a, you know, quantify that? 
So how many customers ask? Again, not looking for 10 or 12, looking for a percentage this is gonna be converted to. And then how many people ask about where their seafood comes from? And then uh, what's the most common seafood question people ask? Um, it's gonna be, well, well, if it's any, if it, maybe things have changed in the pandemic, but historically by far, it's been their questions about preparation, right? So this is one that you're just asking them, you just ask them and you write down whatever they say. But just so you guys know, it's almost always about preparation. So how should I cook it if they're buying, so like a filet of fish or if it's in the restaurant, how is it prepared? How is it cooked? Uh, you know, what's, what's in the sauce? Like that, that kind of stuff. Um, it's fine to only ask one person. If you are at a place that has a bunch of folks, uh, you can ask two people. You can ask that, that fishmonger and a second fishmonger just to see, if, and to see how robust the data is. But you only need to ask one person. Um, and then there's one other thing that we, we added last year, which is, is this business still being impacted by COVID-19? Yes or no? And then a real quick, you know, how? So if it's something you can obviously tell, right, if it's a place you've been going to for years, they have all kinds of stuff, and now they just have like one type of fish taco or something, right? You know, something obvious that you can get, that's great. You can also just ask the staff, hey, how, how, how's business? Is business okay? Things have been down, and you know, stuff has been harmed. We're just trying to, again, get a sense of what COVID has done to us. So. Um, are things being impacted? And good chance they still are. And then a little, you know, sentence or so about what's going on. Okay, then. Then the main data comes along, the quantitative data. So for this, I'm going to write down every seafood, thing, everything that has seafood in it in the store. I'll say that again. I'm going to write down everything that has seafood in the store. So uh, you're gonna do a total of four restaurants and two markets. One of your markets has to be a big market, right? Another one could be a small mom and pop one, a little small carniceria or something over there. But one of them has to be a, a big, a big, you know, relatively large market. So this is what, yeah. Do you want like a grocery store, not an actual fish? No, no, fish market would be okay. Oh. Yeah, so so a, 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 a dedicated fish market or like a Vons or Albertsons or Trader Joe's or something like that. Okay, so, um, so what we're gonna do is everything that has seafood in it, I'm gonna write this down. So bumblebee can of tuna, 20 ounce and bumblebee can of tuna, 16 ounce and like all the different things. So it'll take a while to do the big stores. The, 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 the restaurants will go pretty fast, small markets will be fast, but, but the one big market will take some time. It'll definitely take some time. You might have to go back once or twice to, to complete it. So I'll just say this now, it goes way faster doing this with a buddy. It goes more than twice as fast if you do it with a buddy. Obviously under COVID conditions, we need to be smart and need to be, you know, careful. And uh, so, uh, you know, you guys need to make a, a safe call for you. But if you have a roommate or somebody wants to come with you, it goes way faster to have someone writing down and have someone else reading off the labels than it is for you to try to hold it. it, it just, years of experience, it goes way faster. If you are buddying with a, a, a partner in here, I'm gonna go help her with her restaurant. And then she's gonna come help me with mine. And doing that will still go faster than if we just individually did our markets. I know it doesn't seem like it, but that's what'll happen. So, so I, I know because of where we all live and things that might not totally work out, but if it does work out, I would encourage you guys to try that. Bring your roommate, bring your sister, whoever to give you a hand. It'll go a lot faster. So we have to articulate every item. So it's gonna be the thing, you know, Starkus tuna, 20 ounce can or whatever the hell it is. Species, 
to the best of our ability. So if it just says, you know, fish tacos and there's no fish, I'm gonna write fish, right? But ideally I would be able to say it's Pollock or it's kelp bass or it's white sea bass or it's Pacific halibut or something like that, right? So as much as I'm gonna get as, as specific as I can. And then these are tick boxes. Is it unprepared fresh, meaning essentially a raw filet of fish? Is it prepared fresh, meaning it's not cooked yet, but maybe it's been had some sauce on it or, or you know, ready to be thrown on the barbecue or something like that? Unprocessed frozen. So this is in the frozen section, but it's just, you know, raw, raw filet of something. Processed frozen. So this would be something like a fish stick or something that's been breaded and cooked and it's just ready for you to take home in microwave or whatever. And then canned. So it says canned, but it, that's, that's packaged, right? So that's something that's not fresh and it's not frozen. So anything in a can or, or, or sort of foil packet or, or bag, that all falls under the canned um, you know, room temperature thing. Weight, how big is it? 12 ounces, whatever the hell it is. Count, we pretty much don't use that anymore. That, that, that's, a, that's a thing we use with when we buy uh, like raw clams or shrimp. There's a count number, but you can ignore that. And then this is super important, the unit price. Gotta write down the unit price. And so not asking for the sales price, not asking for the club member's price, not asking for the, the price with this week's discount coupon, the stated raw default price is what we want. What's best for you guys in your analyses and our, us in our analysis, the best is the price per pound, the standardized weight. So the ultimate is, is in the fresh food set, in the fresh seafood section. And it says, you know, whatever is $4.99 a pound, I can just put that in this column, right? But to save you time, if it's a can of tuna that's you know 12 ounces, you don't need to go do the calculations in your head. You just need to make sure you say that it's 12 ounces or say it's 12 ounces here and then the price and we can calculate it later. Okay, next location. So we have species to the best of our ability here. And then we have location to the best of our ability here. It might just say USA. It might just say China but there could be some additional information. It could say um, Santa Barbara or something like that, right? So again, as much specificity as we can get um, based on what it says. Okay, then, um, then there's additional stuff. If, and this won't always apply to everything, but if there's a brand, if there's a processor location, so this is, we'll sometimes see this with the processed, say the, the breaded fish sticks, let's say. So the fish sticks might have been the fish might have been caught in Alaska, but the um, the uh, the breading and the cooking and all that kind of stuff is done in I don't know Seattle or something, right? So that would I'd say that that geographic location. Um, and then uh, the last little bit is also tick boxes right here, and so this is the harvest method. So in many cases, it won't say. So you just take, I don't know. But if they provide any other information, you could, if it's dolphin safe, if, it's, if it says wild caught, if it says farm raised, right? If, it's, if it has MSC certified seal on it, if it says MSC certified, both tick that and also write down the individual number. The individual, I mentioned there's an individual barcode or individual serial number. Write that down so we can just have that. There are possible other descriptors, but again, this is meant to be a tick box thing. And so we don't wanna have a 20 thing long deal, but if there's any other descriptor about how it was harvested, just tick uh, other descriptor and you can put it in the comments. Then I go into the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. That make sense? So let's take a look at, here's an example. So here's one, so I filled this guy out, right? So I've, I've, I've written this stuff in. And then when it comes to the actual items, I said, oh, it's a lightly breaded fish nuggets. It's hokey. It was processed frozen. This is the weight. You don't need to put the, you don't need to put the count in, but 
the weight, the price of the unit, where it was from, brand, the processor, MSC, here's the MSC number, like that. Um, so it's up to you guys as to how you want to do this. You can just print this up and just write on the sheet, right, a piece of paper. You could, um, you know, save it, like bring it as a tablet, right, and just type it in directly. If you want um, onto, onto this as a, as a Google Sheet or, or Excel on your, it's however you guys want to do it. Historically, people just print this up and make notes on the printed paper. Does that make sense? So the, the, um, the restaurant is very, very similar. So here's the data sheet for the restaurant. Same kind of things here, right? Same questions. And here it's the dish name. One difference here is, it, is it an appetizer or entree? Primarily this is about size. So usually the appetizers are usually relatively small. An entree is like a something you'd order as the main thing you'd eat. Species, again, same common as before, species, the price, location, and again, these tick marks kind of thing. So what I'm going to do when I go to my restaurant, I'm going to sit there, and I'm going to first sit down, pop out the menu, and I'm going to write down all the things that have seafood in them, right? Put all these guys down. And maybe it just says fish tacos, right? So I'm going to get it all down, and then once I've gotten that, then I'm going to call the the waiter or waitress over. Hey, can I ask you a question? I had this jerky professor is making me do this lab. He's such a jerk, right? Anyway, um, we're doing this. We're, we're doing this project where we're looking at seafood in Santa Barbara or LA or Ventura County, wherever you are. And so, I'm just curious. Can you tell me what the fish in the fish tacos was? Uh, I don't know. Okay, they don't know. They don't know. So they would just be unknown fish, right? Um, or sometimes I go like, uh, I can check. You're like, cool, if it wouldn't be too hard, I'd appreciate it, right? Again, we're not trying to make these people do Herculean efforts, but we're just simulating some random person walks off the street. And if they're like, fish tacos, what's the fish in the fish tacos? You would think they would be able to tell you what that, what that is, right? Um, yeah, and so, so I, would sort of, I would sort of get all that stuff prepped and then ask him or her, my qualitative questions and then the questions about the seafood. Um, you guys do this whenever works for you. My suggestion though is that you avoid peak dinner rush hour, right? So we're not trying to cause these folks any problems, right? So, so you can go whenever, but you know, we're not, if, if it's in the middle of rush hour and you're asking them like, what, what are all these species? They might just go, look, I, I got stuff to do. I don't have time to answer these questions, right? The other question I often get is, do I have to buy food at these places? The answer is no, but it is a courtesy thing, right? So you might want to at least buy and order fries or something, right? You know, I'm not saying you guys have to break your bank or whatever, but, but um, it's your call. It's your call. But, you know, a little, little courtesy might be you know, plan out your, your meal the next week or you know, two, you know, to kind of hit a couple of these places. But you're not required to do that. Just like with our opinion polls, we're not trying to cause any fracas or any, any, be anybody ticked off, right? Um, so uh, we're just asking questions. It's important you say, we're never going to out anybody, right? So the purpose of this is not to sort of say, oh my God, business X is horrible, evil, and are having all these unsustainable, fit. It's, not, it's not about that, right? Similarly, from some businesses, they want to know, they want us to sort of grade them, right? And again, happy, you guys are more than welcome. You can give them my contact info and we can talk and discuss, but we're also not trying to point out heroes, right? We're just trying to get the data. So we're not trying to point fingers at who's awesome and who sucks. This is just a class activity to get a sense of what's going on with our seafood supply. Um, yes, questions, does that make sense? Eli. Um, I would say that's uh, concerned with the restaurant today. Yeah. So let's say there's like, I don't know, 50 seafood items. Would you have to ask like, oh, where's that from? Oh, what species is this? Like 50 times, you know what I mean? It might get kind of, I don't know, tiring and annoying. Sure. So, I'm just curious. so I've never found a restaurant like that. Okay. So they'll have 
fish and that fish i mean they might have like three or four kinds of fish but those fish you know that fish will be in the fish tacos and the fish stew and the fish whatever right if they if they are a place that does have a, a real diversity 99 percent of the time they put that in the menu so they'll tell you what it is because they're proud of it you know this is uh sockeye salmon from Prado bay or something like that right so so it, it i know it seems like it'd be a huge pain it, it's it's and it's a little bit of pain depending on some sites and stuff but it's not which you, it's not as bad as you might think sure. first pass. Yeah, good call. And so, and our only, so our requirement is the place has to sell at least one seafood item. So if, if I mean, this won't be a problem with the markets and stuff, but, but, but if it has sometimes happened where someone picks a restaurant and they go to the restaurant and they just don't have any seafood, anything. If that's the case, you, we, we need to do another restaurant. So it has to, it has, they have to sell at least a seafood item. This is not a random survey of restaurants in Santa Barbara, Ventura, LA County. This is seafood sellers. So, so that, that's the only requirement. If you do roll in and suddenly find there's nothing at all. Cool. So I mean, I, can't, I think there's this hand up there. I can't see the. Have you done this in the <laughs> Cafe? Uh, we do do the island cafe. Uh, I would say let, I, I I didn't have it as a first target. But that's that's a good one to say. But the people have some transportation problems. So yes, yeah, so we do do tortillas, do do island cafe, but those are I usually save those in case someone just had a problem. With next uh um but 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 general logistics of how to do this questions yeah for, uh, so i i was going to talk about the specific restaurants and we did the cisco do you want us to go with so again the purpose of this activity is random person walking off the street if they walked in and they tried to do their, um, you know, whatever, um, um, Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch. If someone just said Cisco, that's not gonna work. Or another common one we get is Costco. Where do you get your seafood from? Costco. Like, uh, okay. So um, again, we'd like to know it. If the wait, waiter or wait staff, and this does happen, this does happen. People go like, that's a great question. I don't know. I'm going to go find out. And they want to go find out and it's not rush hour. Absolutely. Let them go find out. Um, but if, if they just say, oh, it's Cisco, that's your data, which is they don't know where the, where the heck it comes from, right? That's, that's it. What that's saying is I don't care about your interest and I don't care about that. So it's, it's, it's kind of, again, the key nut here is the fact that we've made our seafood in our country, we've made our seafood supply focused on convenience. So rarely do we buy a whole critter. We're buying a filet and the filet is white or pink. And we're like, okay. It's the equivalent of saying, I want a salad. What's in my salad? Vegetables. Oh, really? What kind of vegetables? From the earth. Do you want that salad or what? Right? So uh, again, I'm not attacking any person or any waste staff, whatever, but it, it is kind of crazy, right? When we have thousands of species, just this off our coast here, hundreds of species of item, of, of, of commercially landed seafood items, as we, as we just saw, right? And if people are like, I don't know, fish, that's kind of weird. And so this is an example of an activity where we're doing it so you guys can have a better understanding of what the landscape is. But in the process of asking about it, it absolutely has been the case 
that wait staff and other people have been like, that's a, I don't, that's a really good, I'm going to go look that up. That's interesting, right? And so the same should go for you guys. I'm going to encourage, this is a, this is a personal opinion. So, so I try to avoid personal opinions, but when one of our, one of our opinion poll questions, if you recall, is how much seafood have you eaten last week? And how often do you ask about where your seafood comes from, right? Do you remember? And the vast majority of people don't ask. That's why these restaurants aren't saying it, right? If every customer was saying, well, what is this? And, and, and you know, what, 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 what's that? And what's this? And what's that? What's that? Then they would know, right? There'd be demand. Well, we've gotten into this strange place where people are fine with random thing from the ocean that I'll put in my body and we're all good. That doesn't work from a sustainability standpoint. We need to be able to have more information to make an informed decision. So the fact that you guys in this activity are going into this, into a business and saying, hey, where do you get your seafood from, right? That in and of itself is, is potentially starting a conversation. And it absolutely, and so, so this question, <laughs> this question, especially early on. Uh, how many customers ask about sustainable seafood? I can't tell you how many times in, in random places like in Louisiana, whatever, when I do this, and I say, hey, how many people ask about that? They'll say, God, I don't think anybody's ever asked. Well, there's one time. Yeah, this professor was doing a class thing. Like, oh yeah, that was me. And so, um, and so in some cases, right, it's we're the only, voice in the wilderness, which isn't going to change much. But if we're part of a larger chorus of voices, that's going to give a signal to these folks in the best possible way, right? We're not saying we're not going to support them. We're not saying they're jerks. But it's just, hey, do you, this freely available information, can, do you have that for me? And so that act can lead people to behave differently or, or, or provide more information. And from that, we can have a more informed decision and we can support more constructive behaviors and, 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 and choose to not support as much the, the less constructive behaviors. Does that make sense? So the very fact you guys are asking these questions is, is an interaction with these folks, right? And is, and is providing some kind of signal. Okay, any other logistics questions of the actual doing of the survey? Okay, cool. All right, so next, uh, okay, so so next, let's talk about our targets. Um, so these are our targets. So this is a sheet. So so we'll pause here in a second. Um, have a look. So this is a this is a Google sheet, and so I have a tab that says market targets for this year and restaurant targets for this year, and then I have last year's too. So we're not don't sign up in the twenty twenty tabs. I just have those for reference. So we know that those places were at least in existence last year. So what I want you guys to do is look around. And we're going to go in a couple rounds. Do not sign up for anything yet. Just have a look. I've sorted the list. So it is by organized by county and then by city. And so uh, we want to, again, get a, a sampling across Santa Barbara, Ventura, LA. Um, Ideally, places that are close to where you live, right? Or on the way home or coming to school or something, right? So, um, I mean, some of us might have to drive somewhere just to get it done because we need to get it done. We can't all sample Camarillo, right? that, that won't work. We need to cast a wider net. But, um, but have a look at that and see what might be a candidate site for you. And so we'll take uh, five minutes and you guys just, just inspect both the market uh, options and the restaurant options cool we'll take five minutes and you guys you guys do that i'm going to pause my recording here